Hello, in this part of the class, we're talking a lot about graph search. And when we're searching for a in, in a graph, we might be looking uh, for different things. Maybe I'm looking for a specific value or a node that contains that value. Um, what we're going to be seeing soon is instead of maybe looking for a given node, I want to see if I can find a pathway uh, between two given nodes. Um, and, uh, and kind of moving forward, we're going to be doing this for graphs in, in general. And uh, and when I say in general, we can have tricky things like maybe there's a cycle in the graph. And the main challenge there is going to be how can we do that correctly without ending up with infinite recursion? All right, so that's going to be our challenge going forward. What we've done so far is we've looked at um, graph search for kind of a more specific case. Uh, we aren't looking for graphs in general, uh, but trees and, and specifically binary uh, search trees. And then the real challenge here is not so much avoiding this infinite recursion, but how can we kind of structure our trees um, so that we can be very fast? How can we um, answer the question, do I have value X, without checking every single node? <clears throat> so binary search tree. The B stands for binary, which means each node has at most um, two children. We call those the left and right children. Uh, and then the S stands for search. And this refers to these rules that we have about where values can fit in the tree. And, and the rule is like this. Um, I can take any node in the tree, and I can look at its value, let's say x. And then if I, if I kind of go to the left or right, ch children underneath that tree, I kind of have these two subtrees, right? And, and the rule is that all the values in the left subtree of a node have to be smaller and that's node's value. And all the values in the right subtree of a node have to be bigger uh, than that node's value. And of course, the benefit of that is when I'm kind of starting down from the root and I'm looking for something, um, I know what I'm looking for. And so to any given node, I know if I should go left or right. I don't have to check both paths. And, and so kind of at each level, I, I might hope that, and in the common case, um, I'm roughly cutting the tree in half, right? So I can uh, kind of quickly find what I want. Uh, now, I, I'm kind of using words like hopeful because uh, there are some binary search trees that are, are kind of structured in a way where we won't always get that fast lookup. And, and those trees are called unbalanced trees. I'm about to show you an example of an unbalanced uh, binary search tree. Um, in a more advanced uh, kind of algorithms class or, or data structure class, we might learn how to construct self-balancing trees. Um, we aren't going to do that here. The only thing we're going to talk about is how the order in which I insert values is going to affect how balanced it is. So what I want you to do is to take a moment on a piece of paper and draw what the tree will look like if you insert these things um, in order. And, and so I'll do the first node, and then after that I recommend you just pause and take however long you need and then resume the video. So the very first value that gets inserted is 25, and since my tree is empty, that's going to be the root. And so it's going to look like that. And since I don't have this self-balancing tree that I keep referring to in other classes, um, once something is in a given position, it's going to stay in that position, right? So this is my root. It's always going to be my root. And, um, and then so after that, I have to kind of keep thinking, like, well, how am I going to insert these other things? Um, like 24, I'm going to do a recursive insert from the top. And so I'll kind of check here. I'll say at the beginning, um, should 24 go to the left or to the right of 25. And, and of course, to obey our search rule, it has to go left because 24 is smaller than 25. So pause me. And uh, now I'm assuming you're back. <coughs> um, and I'm going to work through all of these. So 24 goes next. I start here and it goes left. So I'm going to insert a new node right there like that. Um, and then I get 21. So recursively from the top, smaller so left 21 is smaller so left and so i insert that right here uh there we go and um then four kind of the same thing so smaller 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 uh three three is smaller three is smaller three is smaller three is smaller and so you can kind of see i'm getting this long long string of nodes um, two, same deal. I mean, two is going to go all the way down and end up here. 
And then at the very end, we actually have an interesting case, which is where does 11 go in this tree? So let me do this a little more slowly. 11 is smaller than 25. Uh, 11 is smaller than 24. 11 is smaller than 21. And then down here, I have 11 is bigger than 4. So for the first time, I'm actually going to go right, and I'm going to end up right here, just like that. And, um, and so one of the things that I want you to look at is, or think about is, how does the order of nodes here <clears throat> affect how balanced my tree is? Um, when these values are sorted in some way, I may end up with a very long, strung out tree like this. This isn't quite sorted, right? I mean, 11 is bigger than 2, uh, but except for 11, it is sorted. And, and so since I'm kind of going from big values to smaller, you know, I'm going to kind of get this long chain like this, basically like a linked list. Um, if these values had been sorted from small uh, to large, I would have gotten kind of a, a long string off to the right. Um, it, it, so if we don't have a tree that self-balances, it turns out that what will often work pretty well is if you just randomize this. If I kind of, kind of had randomly sorted this, odds are I would have had kind of a bushier, a bushier tree, and that would have been faster. Um, if I really wanted to be careful, you could imagine that I could um, think about what, what order I want to insert nodes in. And so maybe let me give you one example of that decision. Um, a nice root is kind of in the middle, right? Because if the root is the middle value, then I have half my nodes to the left and half to the right. So kind of looking at these, 11 would have been a nice thing to insert first, right? Because 11 would be bigger than these values and smaller than these. And so then I'd kind of be on my way towards having a nice balanced, balanced tree. Uh, one of the things I want you to think about here is the relationship between a parent and a grandparent. And so 11 ended up here because it was smaller than 21 and bigger than 4. And really that's going to happen to all values that are between 4 and, and 21, right? So if I ever kind of go, you know, up a parent in one direction and then up to a grandparent in another direction, that, that parent and grandparent kind of provide bounds of everything I might insert um, in between these. I kind of have all these nice ways of kind of finding values in a given range. Let, let's say we're searching for a value. Let's say um, uh, we're looking for 22, and, uh, and, and ultimately the, re the result of this search is going to be false. I mean, this tree does not contain 22. But let's just kind of trace through what happens. Um, when we're doing lookup, we also recursively start from the top. So I start here. Uh, 22 is smaller than 25. Uh, 22 is smaller than 24, uh, 22 is bigger than 21, and so I'm going to end up like this. You know, it's empty, so that's when I stopped searching, and I ultimately had to check these three nodes. And, and so I kind of got lucky, right, that, that 22 was kind of fell on a range that was near the top of the tree. Um, the reason I don't like this long string is if I was looking for, um, you know, a value like 2 or, or even 1, something that's not in here, then I'd have to go down this whole long way and it almost becomes like an order order and operation. So another thing I want to do, um, you know, I guess before I gave you an insertion order and then asked you to say what the tree looks like, here we're going to work backwards. Um, you know, I started with a tree and we figure out um, what order things were inserted in. And, and what I see is that the first thing that happened is 11 was inserted, right? Because whatever it uh, gets inserted first, goes first, or, or is the root, right? So I'm going to have 11, 11 first. And there's lots of possible answers here. <clears throat> um, I don't really care about when these are inserted relative to these, right? You know, I don't care if 4 or 24 came first, because those are kind of isolated, right? I mean, all the small values are going to shoot off to the left, and all the big values are going to shoot off to the right. And, and so kind of the only thing that really matters here is, well, of these three nodes, um, who got to be the root of this subtree? And uh, and three did, right? Um, kind of before I had any of this over here, if I had inserted two, you know, if I went 11, two, then two would have been here, right? So I know that I know that three came before two and four, and kind of the same thing over here. I, I know that since 24 is the root of this subtree, 24 was inserted before either of these two. And so there's different orders I could do. I mean, maybe I can say like, uh, you know, maybe I'll do three and then two. And then let's put four for later. 
uh, just for fun. And then I'll say 24 gets locked in. I mean, there are lots of different answers here. And then I, I could do whatever the remaining nodes are. Right? I mean, I could say, I want to get these three still. I'll say, um, you know, let's say 4, 21, 25. Right? So the kind of the key things, right, is that I locked in, in 11 as my root. And then of the values that are less than 11, uh, I had three first. So I kind of locked three in as, as the root of that subtree. And for the values that are bigger than 11, like these three, um, I had 24 first. So that's how I locked that in there. And then after that, I mean, uh, it, it doesn't matter uh, because I'll end up with this tree. Okay, so I kind of carefully constructed a search order to get this nice tree. Um, in practice, randomizing would probably do just fine.